Well, it is that time of year right now. Many high school seniors are working on their college applications. I remember that time. Uh, in Great fact, time. deadlines have already passed at some schools. Yeah, certainly a stressful time. And in June, we may learn that colleges can no longer consider race as one of many factors in choosing which students to admit. Uh, this case, Students for Fair Admissions versus Harvard, argues that America, um, affirmative action is favoring black and Hispanic students and hurting Asian and white students. So attorney and Denver 7 reporter Jessica Crawford joins us live at the desk for today's Justice with Jessica, all mm -hmm. about the history of race conscious admissions mm -hmm. in colleges and whether our largely conservative Supreme Court could do away mm -hmm. with affirmative action. Right, well, so the idea of considering race in college admissions kind of grew during the civil sure. rights movement. And according to the New York Times, less than a month after the death of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Harvard announced a commitment to enroll a substantially higher number of black students than it had in the past. They use race as one of many factors, but not the determining factor of a student's enrollment. A look back at the civil rights movement, a political and social movement to abolish racial segregation and discrimination, an era that resulted in kids of different races getting to learn side by side, people of different races being able to marry one another, and colleges being able to consider race as one of many factors in admitting students. So the removal of it, in my opinion, would be devastating and really take us back um, I would even say as far back as Jim Crow with what could happen. Kendall Taylor is a senior at MSU Denver. I'm an art history major, African studies minor. Taylor is concerned that if the Supreme Court prevents colleges from considering race in the admissions process, students like her may experience more difficulty in being admitted to elite colleges in the future. In the long term, she's worried that all affirmative action policies, policies that seek to include underrepresented groups in things like schools and jobs, could go away altogether. I think that affirmative action in theory allows people to either succeed or fail on their own accord and not because of the obstacles systematically and historically put in front of them. Students for Fair Admissions or SFFA doesn't agree. It's suing Harvard and argued its case in front of the Supreme Court in October. Harvard's admissions process is the model that many elite universities use when choosing their students. In their model, race can be one factor, but not the determining factor a university can evaluate when considering a student. SFFA doesn't want Harvard or any university to consider race as a factor in admissions anymore. Right now, the Supreme Court is looking at a very specific type of affirmative action, which is affirmative action in college admissions. And what has been seen or what has been argued is that among Asian Americans and, and among white people, there is a sense of discrimination going in almost like a different direction, which suggests that people are now being essentially the, the, the idea is almost the problem has been solved. And so now we're kind of overcorrecting in the opposite direction. Arvind Vora is the co-author of the book Invitation to the Ivies. He's talking about SFFA's claim that Harvard's policy discriminated against Asian American applicants in violation of Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. It states that no person in the United States shall on the ground of race, color, or national origin be excluded from participating in, be denied the benefits of, of or be subjected to discrimination under any program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. Right now, Asian American students need on average an, an additional 120 points on their SAT compared to white students they get in. If you remove the option of using racial preference of any kind, that removes that hurdle. The way that I think the, the numbers have borne out, especially when you look at Harvard, um, there's not support for those arguments. Tyrone Glover is a civil rights attorney and president of the Sam Carey Bar Association. He points to the makeup of the 2024 class admitted to Harvard, where Asian American students make up 24.5% of the population. Black students make up 14.8% and 12.7% identify as Latinx. Glover says that if race-based admissions are thrown out, elite colleges could become less diverse. And I think what we've seen is that when you have these race-neutral 
um, policies that are attempting to do the same thing as this more holistic approach, it doesn't work. And what we're going to ultimately see is our universities, you know, they already don't necessarily reflect our community, but that contrast is going to be able to you know, become much more stark. The Supreme Court has a conservative supermajority deciding the case. Many legal experts believe that the court will throw out race conscious admissions and that other affirmative action programs may be on the chopping block in the future. MSU professor of Africana Studies Devon Wright says there will be very strong feelings on both sides of the issue. And a lot of students might be very, very shocked and angry. And so if that anger comes about, I would say the best way to harness that anger is to register to vote and show up and vote. The decision lingering over Taylor's head as she completes her senior year, preparing to graduate into a world that could operate much differently than what she had expected. Now about 200 elite colleges across the country could feel the immediate impact of this. Elite meaning they accept fewer than half of the people who apply. Now MSU Denver, where we did this story, they blanketly guarantee admission if you hit a certain criteria like having a 2.0 in high school. You know, I, I mean, there's going to be a lot of broad reaching effects of this, but some people are also concerned about the impact it could have on women applicants even. Yeah, you know, affirmative action, it goes beyond just a skin color mm. thing. It's not just black and white. In 2014, the Supreme Court actually ruled that the Constitution does not prevent states from banning race or gender conscious admissions. Mm. So some activists are worried that anti-affirmative action groups could next take aim at programs that help women of all colors to get educated.